Hello, and welcome to part five of the new tutor training videos from LearningWorks' English Language and Literacy Program. Part five, Assessment. In this lesson, you'll obtain a general understanding of assessment, as well as some of the definitions associated with assessing student progress, such as evaluation. You'll also assess some student writing. When we say assessment, what do we mean? And what makes it different from something such as evaluation? Let's take a look at some basic definitions next. An assessment measures what a student already knows. At the English Language and Literacy Program, we assess students when we meet them. We assess their level of speaking, reading, and writing. And evaluation is conducted after a student has learned something after a period of being taught. It's done second. So as a tutor, when you first begin meeting with your student, you will assess. You'll get to know them. You'll listen to them speak. You might even choose to have them read a passage or produce some writing for you just so you can get a good snapshot, which is basically what an assessment is. It's a moment in time that assesses a student's levels and skills. There are generally two types of assessment formal and informal. Formal assessments have to be administered in a prescribed manner, and examples of these that you're probably familiar with are any standardized test, exam, questionnaire, or procedure. An informal assessment is, like it suggests, more informal. This can be as simple as examining a little piece of student writing to just listening to someone speak in English and taking note of their challenges and their weaknesses or their areas of strength. At LearningWorks, we conduct both kinds of assessment when we meet students. We use a formal oral language assessment rubric to assign a score to give an impression of a student's speaking abilities. And we also informally ask them to write some sentences based on a picture. So both are good ways to start to get a handle on someone's English level and their areas that they need to improve. As a tutor, you're welcome to conduct formal assessments, but most tutors find that informal assessments, such as having conversations with their student when they first start meeting, maybe collecting some additional writing samples based on a prompt or a picture, asking some specific questions about verbs and spelling starts to give tutors a picture of where their students are. And this picture, this assessment snapshot, is helpful for knowing where to go next and knowing how to develop lessons around that student's areas of challenge. As a tutor, you will assess many different skill areas when you meet your student. Depending on your student's needs, their goals, and their level, you might focus on one more than others, but generally, here are the main areas that you'll be assessing. You'll be assessing your student's speaking skills or their oral language. You'll assess their reading comprehension. Can they understand what they're reading? And you also might assess their writing skills. How can they compose sentences or greater passages using the conventions and rules of the English language? Since we'll focus on speaking skills for a large portion of the in-person orientation that you've signed up to attend, and since we just covered reading comprehension in the previous section of this tutor training, we'll focus now on assessing writing skills. Let's look at how to assess writing. And it's important to note that while not every student includes writing as one of their main goals for working with an English tutor, many students still struggle with writing. Even intermediate and advanced students can use some significant improvement in writing as it is one of the most complex of the English language acquisition skills. So even if you focus on something more with your student like speaking, conversation, or reading, folding in some writing is still a universally beneficial skill for English learners to have. Before we can assess writing, we have to know what are we looking for and how does this change depending on student level. So let's take a look at some of these writing traits. In low beginners, students should be able to write individual words. They should know that a word is different from a sentence and different from a letter. 
they should use those terms or understand those terms as being foundational to English, letters, words, and sentences. When they write individual words, it's okay if it's phonetically spelled. That's still a skill to take the sound that you think you hear and the sound you want to make and try to piece it together with the English alphabet is a writing skill. Students should be able to communicate an idea in a complete sentence. Even if these sentences are simple and the verb tenses are generally in the present, that's okay. They should still include an idea. So students at the low beginner level can also use basic subject, verb, and object construction. A classic example to be used when teaching this idea is I love you. Three words, but still correct and including an idea. Students should be able to separate their words. So this involves practicing making spaces on a line and separating the words so that they can be recognized by the reader. And also low beginners can use capital letters and end of sentence punctuation. Generally, this means a period, but occasionally even a low beginner can start to discern when a question mark or even an exclamation point might be used. High beginners have a more developed sense of all of those foundational skills. Their ideas should always be expressed in sentence form when they write. The reader should be able to understand their general idea. High beginners can begin to tell a story. What happens first, second, and third? Perhaps they can recount something from their day or summarize a story. There should be the emergence of a shape to a story or narrative. High beginners are still probably going to be using the present simple tense, but they might be able to start using other verb tenses like the simple past, maybe the present continuous or the future tenses, the ones that we named as being the basics in the Components of English presentation. And high beginners can also attempt more than just subject verb object form. We're, we're looking for some sentence variety. You'll notice that with low beginners, uh, learners might be afraid to go outside the box of what they already know using a form over and over, whereas a high beginner can start to express a little variety and creativity. And like low beginners, high beginners can be expected, not just encouraged, but really expected to use capital letters and end of sentence punctuation correctly. Moving along with the stages of language acquisition, and here we're using the terms low intermediate and high intermediate, uh, which are the more generally descriptive stages of language that we use in the English language and literacy program, let's take a look at the next few stages and what we can expect from students at these levels in their writing. Low intermediate students should be expected to express their ideas clearly in sentence form in a way that generally is understandable by the reader. They should use more variety of verbs correctly to describe different contexts and time frames. They can begin to write longer stories with more details. They can have more sophisticated sentences um, in terms of the variety and structure of the sentences. They should be expected to have basic subject verb agreement most of the time, especially with simple present verbs like he walks and they walk. And they should remember and be able to explain the rules that govern these changes in verb conjugations. Low intermediate students can begin to self edit. And the reason there's an asterisk here is that any student at any level can be encouraged to read their writing again and look for mistakes to try to develop the teacher within, especially if it's something that they've already covered with their tutor or teacher. Any student can be asked, where are the mistakes? Students can be taught to use the word mistake and to count the mistakes that they see and to circle or underline them and with some guidance and help given the opportunity to correct them. And again, for low intermediate students, capital letters and punctuation should be regularly used. For high intermediate, advanced, or even fluent learners, a lot can be expected of them in writing, and they can really be challenged by writing assignments. A high intermediate student can write a complete story or essay, whether that's one that has a beginning, middle, and end, or an argument that has topic sentences and supporting details. These students can be expected to have a pretty coherent flow of ideas 
and they should exhibit a strong understanding of grammatical rules, particular vocabulary, and punctuation. What's important uh, for any level in terms of kind of universally beneficial writing traits is uh, spelling, for one. The rules governing English spelling, or lack of rules rather, uh, can be very complex, frustrating, and difficult. There are many exceptions to spelling rules, um, many patterns that take a long time to grasp in English, so even fluent learners um, can find review of spelling very beneficial. Also, penmanship is important. Many students who have limited um, or no prior formal education might struggle making their words clear on paper, especially in a digital age when uh, texting and emailing and autocorrect are part of our daily writing lives. Uh, working on penmanship with pen and paper and focusing on how to form letters correctly and have them adhere to the lines on a page, that can be an important part of a writing lesson uh, for a lower level learner or a learner who just has um, penmanship that needs a lot of work. Here's a chance to practice assessing some writing. This is a student writer at the low beginner level. On the right, you'll see a picture that you may recognize from before. It's the writing prompt we use at Learning Works to assess writing for new students. It's a picture of a park with many events and people doing various activities and we ask students to describe the picture in the best way that they can. Take a moment to read the writer's response on the left and consider what has this writer done successfully? What are some of the accomplishments from that list of low beginning writing traits that they've checked off? Similarly, what are their areas of challenge? What would you say to this student as per that list of writing traits might be missing or need to be worked on in order to progress to the next level. Take a moment to do this on your own and then go to the next slide to cross-check your responses. Take a look at these lists and maybe you'll see some of your own feedback that you had when assessing this low beginner writing prompt. In the strengths or accomplishments list, Clearly, the writer of this prompt has an understanding of basic subject-verb-object construction. The writer uses the construction repeatedly. I see man, I see woman. The writer has included capital letters and some periods for each of the sentences. They clearly can separate individual words to make them readable and understandable by the reader. The writer has attempted to spell some unknown words phonetically. For example, the word that looks like bicycali is a phonetic spelling of bicycle. Also, in general, the writer communicates ideas about the picture. They've looked at the picture and, to the best of their ability, describes what's going on. So, in these ways, we can say that the low beginner writer here has some major accomplishments. However, as a tutor, what you'll want to assess also are the areas of challenge, and that will shape what you work on in your lessons and how to frame the future of this student's progress. This student could use some more sentence variety. The uh, subject verb object um, construction is used over and over, and the student could be introduced to some simple new ways of writing sentences. Some subject verb agreement is missing with present tense verbs like drive and have, so that might be something to work on with this writer. You could review some basic grammatical concepts. The writer confused subject pronouns like he with possessive pronouns like his. So even just practicing basic pronouns and how to arrange them and spell them in a sentence might provide some really critical growth for this writer. And some consistent punctuation, not only at the end of sentences, but to separate two sentences that run together. This is something small that could have a huge impact on this writer's um, success and future strengths. Let's look at another piece of student writing, this one from a high beginner student. A high beginner, it should be said, may also be classified as a low intermediate as the stages of language acquisition are not airtight and not always linear. A student might be in between stages or go back and forth and fluctuate at various points in their life. But for the purposes of this discussion, we'll call the student a high beginner. 
and the prompt that they've responded to is not a picture, but most likely a question along the lines of, please tell us about a special person in your life, or can you describe a member of your family? Most low beginners do best with very simple prompts, and that's why pictures are often a great way to um, elicit some writing. High beginners and people at higher stages of language acquisition can do well with more abstract prompts, prompts that leave room for open-ended discussions or descriptions, so I do believe that's what we're looking at here. So please assess this writing using the high beginner writing traits included in this presentation. What are the strengths or accomplishments? And what are the challenges or weaknesses? What might this student need to work on in order to progress to a higher level of writing skill? We don't have a list of the answers per se for this one, but this time just practice assessing as you would if this were your student. Next, in part six, we'll look at goal setting and lesson planning, some of the most important components of the tutoring experience. In this presentation, you'll learn about and practice setting what we call SMART goals, which will help anchor your lessons and help your student and you both feel like you're making progress. You'll troubleshoot goal setting with some practice scenarios, and you'll gain an understanding of lesson planning basics, as well as look at some example lesson plans. Next, in part 